Here's example six of evaluating inverse trig functions. So in this example, we're gonna do the inverse cosecant function. So uh, before we move on, just like we did in the other five videos uh, with evaluating inverse trig functions so far, what we wanna do is remember what the range of this function is. So the way we defined it, uh, the range is from negative pi over two to zero, like that, and then union zero to positive pi over two, like so, okay? So we want to write this down off to the side because we want to be able to check ourselves and say, okay, whatever number we get when we evaluate these, uh, we want to make sure that the number is inside of the range because if it isn't, then something went wrong somewhere. Okay. Now we're going to proceed just like we did before. And since this is inverse cosecant, we're going to kind of do it similar to how we did uh, inverse secant in the previous video. So first we ask ourselves for part A, we want the inverse cosecant of negative two. So we say, okay, which theta in the range of the inverse cosecant function has cosecant, whoops, cosecant of theta equal to negative two. Okay, so it's really just like regular trig, but backwards. So inverse cosecant of negative two, we say, okay, what theta has cosecant of theta equal to negative two? And we also wanna make sure that this theta is inside of the range of the inverse cosecant function. Okay. Well, remember what we did with the secant uh, function, when we did the inverse secant problems in the previous video, remember what we did at this step was we took reciprocals as a shortcut. So uh, we'll, we'll show the long way here in case you didn't see that video. So cosecant of theta is one over sine of theta. So if cosecant of theta is negative two, then one over sine of theta is negative two. Multiply both sides by sine of theta. And then these cancel, and then we have one equals negative two sine of theta. Divide both sides by negative two, so then we have negative one half equals sine of theta. Okay. So cosecant of theta is negative two, that's the same thing as saying negative one half equals sine of theta. So that's what's happening uh, the long way behind the scenes, or as a shortcut, we can just take the reciprocal of both sides. So I'll leave this here for reference. But as a shortcut, we can just take the reciprocal of both sides of this, and the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. Okay, because remember, cosecant is one over sine of theta, so the reciprocal is just plain old sine. Okay. So, uh, if we take reciprocals of both sides, that's gonna be sine of theta equals, and then the reciprocal of negative two is negative one half. We see that's exactly the same thing we got when we did the long way here. Okay, so again, that's just a nice little shortcut. And do we have to do that? No, we don't have to do that, but um, we're gonna have to go back to the unit circle eventually, and I think it's a little bit easier to refer to the unit circle using sine values instead of cosecant values. If you're comfortable with cosecant, by all means, go ahead and do that. That's totally fine. Uh, but anyway, now we're asking ourselves which theta inside of this interval uh, inside of the range for inverse cosecant has sine of theta equal to negative one half. Okay? And uh, that's actually a little bit easier to answer. And then if we look, um, make sure we stay in this interval. If we look at the unit circle there, so first of all, uh, negative pi over two is down here, positive pi over two is up here, and we skip zero, so we don't include zero. But our answer has to be here or here. So if sine of theta is negative one half, that's gonna to have to be down here. And we see that sine of uh, 11 pi over six is negative one half, but uh, 11 pi over six is in the correct quadrant, it's in quadrant four, but it's not, um, 11 pi over six is not in this interval. So we see that 11 pi over six is actually coterminal with negative pi over six. So negative pi over six is actually the number we want. So sine of negative pi over six is negative one half, okay? And actually what that means is that cosecant of negative pi over six is negative two. Therefore, negative pi over six is the number we want. Okay. So inverse cosecant of negative two is negative pi over six. So it might seem like that was really complicated or a lot of work because we spent a lot of time explaining it, but it's really not that bad. It's just a matter of knowing the unit circle, knowing the range of the inverse trig function you're looking at, and remembering well, really, this isn't even a thing, but just as a shortcut to kind of help yourself, just go do the reciprocal thing and then use, express this in terms of sines instead of cosecants so that when you go back to the unit circle, it's easier to think about it. Okay? So that's part A, inverse cosecant of negative two. Okay? Now how about part B, inverse cosecant of positive one? 
So let's go ahead and ask ourselves the exact same question. So which theta inside of the range of the inverse cosecant function has cosecant of theta equal to positive 1? Well, I'll do the reciprocal thing again. So if cosecant of theta is positive 1, then sine of theta is also positive 1. And this is a little bit easier to answer than this, could, than this is with the cosecant. So if we go back to the unit circle and check it out, we'll say, OK, well, hey, sine of pi over 2 is positive 1. And it just so happens that pi over 2 is inside of this interval, barely, right? It's right here on the endpoint. So that's our answer, pi over 2. And that's all there is to it. Okay, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and that means that cosecant of pi over 2 is 1. Okay. So what we have is the inverse cosecant of 1 is pi over 2 because cosecant of pi over 2 is 1, and pi over 2 is part of the range of inverse cosecant. Okay, how about the inverse cosecant to the square root of 2? Can we ask ourselves the exact same question? Which theta inside of this interval has cosecant of theta equal to the square root of 2? Well, we do the exact same thing we just did. Uh, take reciprocals. Sine of theta is then, then the reciprocal of root 2 is 1 over root 2 which is a totally fine form, but if you're not used to that, having radicals in the denominator, you can rationalize, multiply the top and the bottom by root 2, and then you'll see that uh, this becomes sine of theta. So on the top we have root 2, and on the bottom we have root 2 times root 2 is 2, so sine of theta is root 2 over 2. So which theta inside of this interval has sine of theta equal to root 2 over 2? Well, we know that sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Again, just directly from the unit circle, we have that. And pi over 4 is uh, part of this interval. Okay, so we're good. So sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, which means cosecant of pi over 4 is uh, the square root of 2. Okay. And again, I do want to point out uh, one more time that if you know the cosecant well enough and you feel like you don't have to go through the sine function to get it, that's totally fine. Um, it's just the sine function might be a little bit easier to use on the unit circle. When you go back and refer to the unit circle, it's probably going to be labeled in terms of cosines and sines, uh, x coordinates and y coordinates, but probably not labeled in terms of cosecants. But just remember that cosecant is 1 over sine, so take a reciprocal and do this thing here. Anyway, uh, so that's our answer for part c, pi over 4. So the inverse cosecant to the square root of 2 is pi over 4 because cosecant of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 and pi over 4 is inside of this interval here, inside of this union. Okay, So that's a 0 right there. Okay. And then part d, inverse cosecant of 0. So just like with part d in example 5 in the previous video, there's going to be three different ways of thinking about this. So if you've been watching those examples, uh, this answer is going to definitely be no surprise. Anyway. Uh, which theta in this interval has cosecant of theta equal to 0? Well, if we do this the way we've been doing, do the reciprocal method, uh, take the reciprocal of both sides, sine of theta equals 1 over 0. Ugh, no, that just can't, no. Never divide by 0, can't happen, ever happen, no. So basically, we're asking ourselves for, uh, we're asking us to find a theta such that sine of theta is 1 divided by 0. Well, that's just crazy talk, you know, that's, you just can't divide by 0, it's not a thing, it's not going to happen. So there is no such theta that makes that possible. So D and E does not exist, no solution. That's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it is to look at this and say, OK, I want a theta such that the cosecant of theta is 0. Well, hey, the range of the cosecant function is negative infinity to negative 1, union 1 to infinity. Well, 0 is not part of the range. Okay, So uh, the range of the cosecant function does not include 0. So there is no theta such that cosecant of theta is 0. Because 0 is a value that's never attained by the cosecant function. No matter what theta is, you're never going to get 0 back. Because this right here, this is the range of the cosecant function. Okay? So um, that's another way to think about it. And then a third way to think about it is, well, since this is the range of the cosecant function, it's also the domain of the inverse cosecant function. Okay? So uh, if we say, OK, find the inverse cosecant of 0, well, hey, 0 is not in the domain of the inverse cosecant function. So since this number is not in the domain of this function, 
we cannot do this evaluation right here. It just can't be done. It's no solution. It does not exist. DNE just can't be done. And that's all there is to it. So that's it for example six of evaluating inverse trig functions. And this has been the inverse cosecant function.